Right then, before we get into what is likely to be a hotly debated video, what follows is merely a comparison between my fastest lap to date around Castle Coombe in the Evora GT430 and the fastest lap around Castle Coombe I could find of a 991.2 GT3. As such, it is very far from a scientific or definitive comparison between the two cars. I have absolutely no idea about the state of the GT3's tyres, for example. However, until the opportunity to drive both cars back to back comes along, this was, for me at least, still a worthwhile and revealing exercise. Anyway, here's the lap, followed by some analysis and a few observations which I hope you'll find interesting. So here we are at the start of the lap, the Evora got a good run through the last corner which it will need to hang on to the hard charging GT3. It will come as no surprise that the near 500 horsepower GT3 makes it to the yellow cone first along the flat out section towards quarry corner. But by the time the cars reach the blue cones at Avon Rise it's clear that the Evora has made back some time on the brakes. And by the time both cars reach the apex of the quarry, you can see they are pretty much level again. But have another look at this flat out section again and listen for the engine note as the Porsche lifts. The Evora is still on the power and up into fifth. You can see also that the Evora requires a bit more steering angle to get around the corner. There is still a touch of understeer that I'd like to dial out, but it's working well generally overall and manages to get a nose ahead as we enter the first chicane. There's nothing in it once more as they charge around old paddock bend. But the GT3's horsepower advantage shows once again on the run down to Tower Corner. The GT3 impressively manages to hang on to a slender lead as they turn into Bobby's chicane. The Evora exits the chicane in second years, which is something I would imagine would benefit the higher revving. GT3, but running all the way through third gear into fourth, it stretches out a lead as we approach the pit entry. Into the final turn, then at Camp Corner, and the Evora claws back a bit of time on turn in before a dash to the line where all that separates the cars over a flying lap of Castle Coombe is this. Now I'll just let the tape roll into the following lap so you can see how close the two cars are. 
right down to the remarkably synchronised gear changes. Have to consider that. Mighty. Now there's no question for me that both cars could go a fair bit quicker than this, in fact the combined best sectors time for the Evora was a 115.2. I'd still expect the GT3 to be ultimately quicker around most circuits, but it looks to me like most of this advantage is pure straight line pace and that actually if you put 500 horsepower in an Evora chassis it would actually be the quicker of the two cars. But it's clear to see that two evenly matched amateur drivers are going to have a hell of a time on a track day with these two cars. Whoa. Now sticking strictly to observations which I think are valid from such an imperfect comparison, have a listen to the revs on both cars as they go around the right hand of that old pedal bend. This is just titanic through here. Absolutely flat out around there. So quick. Now this time, compare how the two cars ride and manage Castle Coombe's notorious bumps. Now it might simply be that the GT3 would improve massively by wow. turning off the stiff dampers button. Bam it certainly looks like it rides too hard and is struggling a bit over Castle Coombe's bumps which are worse than most circuits. But this for me is an emphatic demonstration of the Evora GT430's talent in the ride and handling department. So there you have it folks, just a quick comparison for a bit of fun. I'd love to arrange a proper road and track comparison of the two cars at some point and we'll do my best to make that happen. Until then please subscribe, that will make sure you'll be the first to know. I look forward to your comments below and thanks as always for watching.